So we started to explore uh, editing the menu so that it looks a little bit nicer like what we would envision. To further go toward that, I want to make the menu more robust and that it has more uh, targeted information. So here's what we need to do. It's a couple of parts. We need to create pages to display the content, and then we need to add those pages to the menu. Either method that we do, first or second, shouldn't really matter, but I'll do it this way first. Let's create the pages, and then we'll add them to the menu. If we go back to dashboard, all pages, these are the pages we have. I want to create a page just for cakes, just for cupcakes, just for cookies, etc. I want to create pages for a particular product category. So under all pages here, we should have add new, <coughs> or add new at the top there. So go ahead and add a new page. Be careful, because you've got add new post, add new media, add new page, add new product. Make sure you're under pages. Add new page. So go ahead and click on that, add new page. And at the top here, this is going to be the name. Remember, this is the name of the menu item, the name of the permalink, and what appears on screen. So what we're going to do here, cakes. I'm going to type cakes. All my cakes will appear here. <coughs> the permalink then says cakes. That's good. Cakes will appear on screen. And when we add it to the menu, it'll say cakes in the menu. We can, of course, change this whenever we want. Um, before I add any content here, I want to set the page attribute on the right side, parent. This is to link pages together. This uh, cake page is related to the main products page, isn't it? So that's our parent. The parent is what is the larger, you know, what is the, what is the top level of organization of our content? The parent of this will be the shop. Notice if you click on that drop down, it shows you here all the pages that currently exist. And the shop exists and it has these sub items. They don't necessarily line up, unfortunately. Just because they're children elements in here does not mean they will automatically show like that in the menu. In the menu, you still have to arrange that order and all of that. But what we want to do here is select that the shop is the parent of this child page. That's for organization internally. And also up on the address bar, once this is published, once this is you know set for real, it, the address will itself say, victorsbakery.com slash shop slash cakes. So that's also why we would want to set parent pages to further define our addresses. It doesn't show it right now, it will once we publish it. That's what will happen there. So I've got a title, it adds a permalink. I've set a page attribute of parent. What will actually display on screen here will be a short link, a short code that is a short code that will only display the cakes. <coughs> you've got a variety of buttons at the top editor here, and at the very end you've got a brand new one that you might not have noticed. A couple of credit cards. Click on that, and that's something that was added from the WP e-commerce plugin. Here's the trick. What do we display on this page? Because the page is just the placeholder. What do we display on it? Here we're saying no category. All your categories, which is still internally set to product category. Only cookies, cakes, or pies. Well, I want to display only cakes on this screen, so select category cakes. Select the category you would like to display with a short code number of products per page. Here's where I can set, I've got 40 cakes for sale, and I want it to display, you know, five at a time, three at a time, whatever. I can set that right there, number of products per page. Let's just say for the moment I want to display five at a time. Just type five. <laughs> sale products, we can activate, don't click any of these yet. What these are saying, add all sale products or add sale products by category. If we have created products 
and added sale prices. <coughs> Those stand out a little bit different than regular products. Here we can choose. This is optional. We can choose. If I have seven cakes and three of them have a sale price, then show on the screen only the cakes that are on sale. That's the second option. If I've got three cakes on sale, five cookies on sale, and a pie on sale, if I activate the first option, all products that are on sale will display on this screen, defeating the purpose of selecting a category here. I want to show cakes, but then down there I said, no, show all sale products, regardless of being cakes or pies or whatever. That's why I'm saying don't select any of these yet, because if you select one, you can't unselect it. If you select it at an accident, click cancel and try again. So I don't want any, I don't want to do any focus on sale products. I want all my cakes category, five at a time actually. I could do products tab and I can specifically show individual products on a page. I only got three, but what if I, once I've got 40 products? So I could show an indiv I could create a page that focuses on a particular product. But that happens automatically. Uh, the, the plugin automatically creates pages to focus on products. I hardly find any use for this in the real world, but you could if you if you if you need it. Add a buy now, that's done automatically. Add an add to cart, that's done automatically. So I didn't do anything under products tab. <coughs> under products tab and then under premium upgrades I haven't bought any of the premium upgrades I haven't bought the gold cart so there's nothing really to look here I added a product category and how many it's called an insert and the short code is this it automatically wrote for us so instead of writing this ourselves we just click that button and then we wrote, and then it wrote for us WPSC products space category ID seven. Internally, your products have an ID number in the database. We know it as the cakes category, but internally it is item number seven in the database. And we said originally we wanted five at a time. Well, later on I'm going to decide to put eight at a time. Notice how then you can easily change it here. Eight per page. That's all we really need to do here. Go ahead and publish it. Question. Why is it a credit card icon? That's the icon that the publishers of the plugin decided to choose. Instead of a different kind of icon, like a little gear or something, they chose a credit card. All right, so as I said, this takes a couple of steps. We create a page, we add the products to the page, we add it then to the menu. Let's do that. Let's go to Appearance, Menus. And here then, here's our current menu structure. We don't have, we don't have the cakes item added yet into our menu. It might not add itself by default, especially if this option here is turned off. Automatically add new top-level pages. If that's turned off, any new page will not add itself to the menu. I don't recommend to turn that on anyway. I don't recommend to turn that on anyway because it won't know where I want it. It'll just put it alphabetically somewhere. So I don't even turn that on because I have to manually arrange it anyway. What I mean by that is select cakes, select cakes from the left side here, and then add to menu. It added it at the very bottom. I don't quite want that. I want it inside of the shop. I want that when someone clicks the button to drop down shop, it shows cakes. 
or whatever I whatever you want. But I'm saying I'm gonna put this under the the shop category, the shop menu item. So just drag it <coughs> in place. Save the menu, view the results, and when I click the little drop down arrow for shop, I've got cakes. And if I click on cakes, I will only see cake products. <coughs> so let's do this again together for pies. We can do this for all of our products. So now we need to do the same thing for, for pies. <coughs> Step one, remember, we go back to the dashboard and let's create a brand new page. So let's add a brand new page. We will call the page up here Pies. <clears throat> On the right side, Page Attributes, we set that to the shop. Pies are a subcategory of the shop, the shopping cart, the products page. So select the shop page attribute. In the actual content area, click the Add Category button, the credit cards, click that. And now we're saying, select category, pies, five at a time. <clears throat> Show only pies, five at a time, insert and publish. So in, in this case it said cut product category 8. Publish. Notice now after that I published it, the ad, the permalink says the name of the site slash shop slash pies. That shop automatically adds itself because we selected a parent of shop. And the third step, add it to the menu. So I'm going to go to Appearance, Menus. Um. There's a brand new pies, so select it, add it, and then rearrange it, and save the menu. So I'm, <coughs> I'm selecting pies, add that to the menu. It's at the bottom in the wrong place. I'm going to drag it up, put it wherever you want. Just be careful here. I'm trying to put pies below cakes, but whoops. Now I put pies as a subcategory of cakes. So that means that someone's going to open shop and then have to open cakes and then see pies. That doesn't make sense. So this is finicky sometimes. Make sure you drag this so that the dotted line is lined up on the same level here so that both of these are drop-down elements of the shop. And maybe this is going to start to get cumbersome here because it's going to show all my categories of products and all of this stuff. What if I move this stuff into its own subsection as well? I want to consolidate your account, sales confirmation, and checkout into one screen. What about if I create a little button that says shopping cart? And in that shopping cart, when you open that, it has your account, sales confirmation, checkout. Just want to confirm this works, then we'll do that. See what I'm saying is we've got shop, and if you open up the menu, you have cakes and pies plus all of this stuff. It might be nice to put those three into another drop-down element. There's a cool way to do this um, because the concept here is that when you drag when you drag an element below an element like that indented, it becomes a drop-down. <coughs> I want to put these three like that indented into something. I don't have anything these three to indent into yet. Here's one way to do this. Can you just make it a parent somewhere? No, because remember the parent doesn't automatically make it a, make it indented. 
you have to still drag them in the menu to indent them to be drop downs. Adding them as a parent just really edits the address up here. See, shop cakes, but it doesn't actually visually indent them. We will, we will indent them like this. The trick is, we can add pages to the menu, posts, products, links, categories, etc. Notice these categories are categories of blog posts, not categories of products. That's why we have to create a page, put the short code, and then our cakes show up. I don't see cakes here because this is technically cakes. These are categories of blog posts. We do have product categories here. I guess we could have done that as well. But anyway, multiple ways to do the same thing. What I'm trying to do now is to create some sort of parent so that these two can get indented. The way we can do this is, one of the ways is, a custom link. Open up the custom link section. Our link text will be shopping cart. That's what will appear on the screen here. Our actual address, delete that and just put the pound sign. The pound sign is a dummy link, is a temporary link. I'm not putting a real address. I'm making it behave like a button. It doesn't go anywhere. If someone clicks on the button that says shopping cart, it won't go anywhere. I don't want it to go anywhere. I want shopping cart link to open up and to display your account sales confirmation checkout. I'm adding the dummy link. I'm adding whatever text I want. I could probably go get a shopping cart emoji and put that in there. Add to menu. What I'll do in my case, I'm going to move the shopping cart so that it is inside of the shop and then I'm going to move your account <coughs> indented there and sales indented there and checkout indented so now I've got a parent element to display these sub elements which are inside the shop element question you should see it simply there on the left. You've got products, pages, post, custom link. So custom link, uh, I believe we saw this before when we were when we a while ago when we set a Facebook link and Twitter and such. But it can be also used for this trick. You create these elements in your menu that don't go anywhere, but they're part there for organization. Let's see if mine worked. I go back to view site. I open up the shop. Now I see cakes, pies, shopping cart. I click on that and it doesn't do anything. It keeps me on the same page. But then when I open the menu item, I've got your account sales confirmation checkout. This is one possible organization, of course, if you've got your own structure. The sky's the limit. The menu is very flexible. So at the moment, all my pies are in one screen, all of my cakes are in another, and if someone does click on the shop, <coughs> it'll show everything. So you may or may not want that. If you don't want that, you have to edit your menu to do the same thing we did here to create a custom link called the shop so that it doesn't go anywhere, and then add your items below it and when someone clicks that, the shop won't go anywhere anymore. It simply opens up to display cakes, pies, cookies, etc. Speaking of that, we need cookies. So now on your own, add a cookies menu item. Try it the way we did it. See if you're able to do that. Now on your own, add a cookies menu item.
Oh, this is really funny here. So I'm, I'm getting a cookie emoji, a cookie emoji from emoji.com. And uh, it looks like a cookie. It looks really nice. But for some reason, Samsung is big party poopers, and they've got saltine crackers instead of cookies. It's so disappointing. Who wants a saltine cracker? What's that? Oh, sure. Yeah, because like how, how we talk about them as french fries, but in England they talk about them as chips. That might be it. All right, so hopefully you got that page set up there. I've got cakes, pies, and cookies. Anyone need a help with that? I got it from the website getemoji.com. The color ones for the cakes and the cookies? I didn't see any color. What happens is that when you take the basic one, it will automatically show the correct one depending on the person's web browser. So when I copied the basic black and white one and pasted it, it automatically turned it to the color ones. Now, just for fun, a little off topic, I wanted to add an icon for shopping cart. I wanted an emoji for shopping cart. So I went over to getemoji.com and I searched shop. And there's something called shopping trolley, which I suppose is a shopping cart in the US. But in my case, it doesn't show it up. 
if I actually click on it, it shows, okay, it is, it is going to be a shopping cart icon, but it's not fully supported on all of the on all of the browsers yet. So if I try to use one that is just an empty box, some people will see an empty box, some people will actually see it. This is scheduled for release in 2016. It'll look something like that. So if there's any emoji that you're looking at and a version of it is an empty box, perhaps don't use it. For example, shopping bags. On Apple it looks nice and Google and so, but not all of the devices have it. For example, we're on Windows, so our version is empty. So I would recommend don't use emoji that are not fully supported by all the devices, or else someone that goes to your site on a device that you didn't test with will see, well, why is this broken? That's weird. This shop doesn't look professional. So be careful about that. I want a cookie that looks like this on my baking site. Does it look very appetizing? <laughs> oh yeah, the saltine. The saltine ones, huh? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, unfortunately they're not they're not consistent with these. The most famous ones are the are the Apple ones. You know, these are the ones that are, are the classic. Yeah. You know, smiling face with open mouth. That's the classic one that Apple that everyone sees. But over on Google on Android phones, they look like that—a little kind of blob thing. And on Microsoft, they look like that. Like the Android. Yeah, the Samsung's got a little more character. Really, this one's got ears. The other ones don't. So they're not—they're not quite consistent. I we saw that with the. You know, with the girl with, with bunny, bunny ears. How one was two people and one was one person. <coughs> okay, design-wise, the menu is something important to to work with and. We've worked with it here. It's fully customizable. Design-wise, we have some limitation on the actual. Well, what does it What does it look like on on screen here? And that's because it's based on the theme. This is that answer that I give when people ask, "Why is it doing this?" or "Why doesn't it do that?" It often depends on the theme. Our particular theme is a very boring theme at the moment, and so it's not that interesting to look at. Uh, let's do a quick recap of, um, of, of themes uh, and talk about them in a more advanced way, which would be child themes. Um, let's go back to the dashboard. Appearance. Dashboard, appearance, menu, themes. Click on themes, and these are the ones that are currently installed. Uh, I guess we have here Hotel and Omega and such, just to see what it looks like. Uh, I've got this Omega theme. You do too, probably. I want to activate Omega, so click Activate. And then visit site. Oh, very good. So, yeah, this is much better. It's responsive. Correctly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this wasn't working at that other thing. So that's often what happens with 
with our design and such in that it's it's um, going to depend on the theme. And uh, there's so many themes to, to choose from. If you are going to have an e-commerce site, it might be a good idea to, to, to load up a theme that is e-commerce friendly, e-commerce optimized. So let's explore that a little bit. We had this one, and I don't even remember downloading it, but I guess we had it. So let's say we want something besides these themes. So at the top in your dashboard themes, click Add New. We're going to add a new theme. And here we'll see the featured, popular, latest, favorites, etc., and search. So I'm just going to type in on the search themes here, maybe just shop. Let's see what shopping cart friendly sites might appear. This says 74 of them. That might be good. Um, they should all probably be listed as free. If it's not free, you'll see a little dollar symbol. Because there are free themes, there are premium themes, and there are freemium themes, which is a theme that works very, very well, and it's free. But then if you pay a little, you get extras. And oftentimes the extras are a little more functionality, but usually tech support. If you get the, the completely free version of the theme, usually you're on your own to get it to work just right. Usually this thumbnail here, like maybe this shop, shop cystic light, maybe this one would look great, you know, on my particular on my particular theme, but or, or my particular cart. But oftentimes this thumbnail here is really showing off the best possible way. And unfortunately, oftentimes you get a theme and it doesn't exactly look the same. Sort of like when you see a commercial for that very tasty hamburger, you go buy it and it's squashed and it's missing pickles and all of that. Because they show the most beautiful version of, of you know products when you see them and, and you know, I'm guilty of that because one of the things in my company that we do is we do product photography and we try to make it look the most appetizing as possible. If it actually shows up like that from the kitchen, um, it's a plus. <laughs> so it's a surprise. It's a surprise. So here you see this amazing theme, and I want it, and I activate it, and it doesn't look the same. Well, we'll talk about that right now. But let's say just browse around a little bit. I found one called Shop Shopistic dot Shopistic Light. Um, I'm just going to click install it. If you see some other one, go ahead and go for it. But I, I see this one. I'll install it. It'll connect back to the WordPress mothership, and then it will download it, install it, but then you have to remember to activate it. You have to remember to activate plugins and themes. You can have multiple plugins installed or active. You can have multiple multiple themes installed, but only one active at a time. People then ask me, well, what if I want a particular theme on my shop page and another theme on my home page? You cannot have two at once directly unless you install two different WordPresses on your site. One WordPress for the main part of the site and another WordPress just for the shop. Now you've got two WordPress dashboards to work with. That's a way around it, but to my knowledge, there's no way to have more than one <coughs> more than one theme at once. The good news is that oftentimes these theme authors give you a lot of templates to work with to make the pages look different. So let's see what we get with this one. If you found Shopsystic just like me, let's see what it looks like. I've never used it. Remember to activate it. I'm going to go to the visit site. very different. What does it look like under the shop? Oh, I see my emoji doesn't show up in the menus for some reason. Huh. I'm going to go to the shop. Let's see what that looks like. Add to cart, go to checkout. I like the animation. I like this here. It doesn't look like a boxy grid, although I would like a little bit of space cleaned up here. It looks like we've got, in this one, spaces for a sidebar. 
So basically what I'm showing you here is my company, we would, um, remember I said there's three levels that we, that we could work for a company. Level one is that we just download a theme, use it as is, customize it a little bit based on the customization options built into the theme. Level two is we get a theme, paid or free, and then we go in and customize it much more hardcore via the code editor. If there's no button that helps me change something in Customize, we can always accomplish it through code. That's level two. And then level three is we build them a site from scratch. That's the most expensive, time-consuming one because we've got to design the whole site and set up its sidebars and write all of the code and optimize it and everything. So we don't recommend when we get hired by a client, we, we don't recommend for them to choose option three anyway. Yes, it's more lucrative for us because it's going to take more time and we're going to charge more, but we even tell them, don't choose option three. <coughs> Spend those $5,000 you were going to pay for that just to design your theme. Spend that money on level two and some SEO optimization and some social media and such because just because you've got an amazing looking site is not the end of it. You need to optimize it, you need to do social media, you need to do blogging. So that's why we recommend level two and spend some of the budget on the ancillary stuff. <coughs> In this case, we've downloaded this theme, it's for free, I kinda like it, but I would still need to do this. You need to take some time to reverse engineer the theme a bit. The first thing that I would do is, I would go to the dashboard, and I would take a look under Appearance Customize. I would go to the customize, what are the options that this particular theme developer gave us? But before that, I just saw something. Sometimes you also get this. This theme recommends the following plugin, WooCommerce. Sometimes a theme relies on other plugins, and you'll get some notification up there that says install these other themes. That's very common. You download a free or a paid theme, and it looks really, really nice. But then once you download it, it says you also need these three other themes, like the slideshow, I mean these three other plugins, like the slideshow creator, and the visual composer, and blah blah blah. I'm going to ignore that for the moment because I don't want two shopping cart plugins at once, either or, WooCommerce or WPCommerce. I suppose this theme is designed to work best with WooCommerce, but remember our, our shopping cart data and such is not easily transferable between the two. I'm going to ignore the recommendation on this one, but if it's telling you on yours, get Visual Composer and get Contact Form 7 and this and that, I would go for it. But if it's telling you WooCommerce, ignore that for the moment. We don't want two conflicting shopping carts. Anyway, what I was about to do was we go to Appearance, Customize. Let's see what the theme authors let us customize. Right away it's telling me up here, Documentation. That's very good. I want to read the manual on how this theme works. People oftentimes just jump in, well, how do I do this? How do I change it? RTFM. Anyone know what that stands for? <laughs> read the funky manual. Read the manual. How does it work? They're going to tell you how it works. There's a manual. There's a documentation. Now you shouldn't have any trouble adding your logo here. What does it keep saying? The, the publisher's logo? Read the manual and it'll tell you to go to a certain part of the screen and change it. But anyway, just exploring a little bit. There's all of these things that I can edit on this site. The site identity, there's your title, your tagline, which doesn't show up, but depending on the theme. Background image, I can put a background image behind it all, it looks like. There we go. I can put a background picture, repeat it, tile it, position it, attach it, remove it, menus. I've got my, my social menu set to social, but actually the main menu needs to be part of my navigation menu. 
because if you notice the menu is slightly wrong mine was saying welcome to indulgence I didn't I didn't want it to say that it's supposed to say home so oftentimes when you switch between themes it doesn't quite know which menu to put where sometimes your menu's just gone not that it's deleted it's just that it's not activated in my case, mine wasn't activated, and so it just put alphabetically things into the menu. I didn't want that. So I had to go here to the menu section and select my main menu as the menu location here. Logos. Check out the pro version to change the logo. That's where we get those hints toward the freemium version. And if I go to their website, just a quick look, how much does this cost? <coughs> These range between like $20 and $60. They're usually not that expensive. For $59. So you get all of these features plus tech support. That might be worth the price of admission right there. I need to send them an email or call them up. How do I get this thing to do what I want? You don't get that on the free one. It looks like also you can't quite set a home page. That's a big if right there. I'm loving this theme, but look at that. I'm not going to be able to customize my home page very easily. <laughs> Color options, unlimited. And again, $60 from when you're running your multi million dollar empire, that's not so bad. Your multi dozen dollar empire, that's still not so bad. Mm -hmm. I can't quite edit my logo, but here's the secret. It doesn't let you edit the logo, but actually it does. <laughs> if you go to Appearance Editor and you edit the code, you can change anything <coughs> in the site if you know the code. If you don't know the code, then again, you're stuck. But that's why this is level two. What's that? The code is right here. The code is under Appearance oh, okay. Editor. You always have the ability to check the code of anything in WordPress. Right there. So that's level two. Level one is we get a, a theme, paid or free, and we go in and reverse engineer it. What can we do with it? What do they allow us to do in the customized screen? Level one, a certain price. Level two is we do get a theme, paid or free, and then we roll up our sleeves and work with the code. We work in the editor, edit it exactly how the client wants, that's level two. And then level three, we would build it all from scratch, which is very expensive and time consuming. Yes? Do you have a class that teach how to change Yes and no. I teach, um, I teach an HTML programming class that focuses on making an app. So I do teach coding, but it's too focused on making an app. The good news is that the app is based on HTML, which is what WordPress is. And the better news is that what I teach in that class to make an app in HTML will then apply to Android, iPhone, Windows Phone, Blackberry. So you learn HTML and you can use that to edit your WordPress website and create apps for all the platforms. It's usually Tuesdays and Thursdays, 6 p.m. Uh, part 3 starts next month. I wouldn't go into Part 3. I'd go into Part 1, and that'll be in a couple of months later. No requirements. I have people coming in that have never touched the code and do well. Um, even in three months, we're not going to become a pro, because there's always something new to learn. But in three months, you do get a lot of insight and intro to how all of this works, and uh, how to think like a programmer, and how to code, and get advice and succeed. Let's see this particular theme then. Again, I can't quite edit my home page unless I update or go into the code. Sidebar, I can't do anything there. Menus, I can't use the mega menu. The mega menu is, is basically the, the name about a menu that, let's say, you hover over the, the shop and then that shows you a menu that is expanded further further and has even more elements. This one is just one simple drop-down that's built into WordPress. The Mega Menu, you've probably seen it. You hover over the shop and here you've got three columns of a menu. 
the cake column, the shop, uh, the pie column, and the cookie column. That's the mega menu. This particular theme automatically opens up all of this. That's kind of interesting. I kind of like that. Instead of it being a drop down, further drop down into shopping cart, it just divides it like that. So the trick is that I can kind of make a mega menu by doing this, what I did here, of making a parent element and putting sub elements into the menu. Footer, I can't really do anything with the footer, so it's just, you know, it really entices you, but you can't do much with this theme. And that's, that's what happens sometimes. Yes. How often in your business do you tend to customize a free theme and versus customizing the pro theme, or do you never customize the pro theme? We customize the pro theme also, because what happens is more people are going to get the free one because it's free. So you and a hundred other people got the same theme. And even with a little bit of customization here, it's going to look like everyone else. So then I think, okay, I'm going to pay for the pro one. Less people are going to pay for the pro one because honestly people are cheap. So less people pay for the pro one. But instead of 50 other people, 10 other people also pay for the pro one. So now you, your site could look the same as 10 other sites. Once we go into the editor, we can customize it so that no other sites look the same. So that's why it's still valuable to edit a pro theme, to even to give it even more customization and differentiation. Now again, if we edit, we need to reach out themes to contain Yes, and we'll, we'll get to that very soon. Um, so we have the whole theme repository here in in WordPress, again, I can keep searching shops or other keywords and find a bunch of them. And in my case here, there's 75 of them. 74. Here's a couple of other ways to get themes. You could do a plain old internet search and search for the keywords um, WordPress, e-commerce, Themes, for example. WordPress e-commerce themes free. WordPress e-commerce themes premium portfolio. We could search by year. Maybe we'll find the top 10 e-commerce WordPress themes for 2016. I'm simply going to search for WordPress e-commerce themes. Let's see what appears. Well, here I've got five million results to choose from. So, the official search that we were inside of our site with is not the only place to get themes. We can, of course, do an internet search. And here I see 60 best WordPress e-commerce themes from Tripwire Magazine. So, I'm going to check that one out. I I haven't seen it before, but I'll click it. I'll see what's there. Let's just say any one of these ID store. Everyone's going to range. You have to see what you need to do to get it. Some of them is just a quick direct <coughs> download. Some of them uh, you have to jump through some hoops, but basically on any of these there's going to be most likely you click to download and it'll give you a zip file. What you do with the zip file is you go back to your WordPress themes and at the top add theme, upload theme. So if you happen to get a theme off of someone's website for free or paid, most likely they will give you the theme as an archive, as a zip file. All you have to do is select Upload Theme there, and that's how you install it. Yes? Is it safe to use other people's theme? There's nothing that they can have from your website. Unfortunately, there is. They could, they could put malicious code in the theme, and then your site is compromised, your site is hacked. What I'm showing you here 
It's a very good point. I'm sure I don't know anything at all, at all about Tripwire magazine. I don't know if they're giving bad themes full of viruses and bad code. So this is one possible way to do this, to do a search out on the big old internet. Another way that might be a little bit better is to go to reputable theme developers and get a theme from there. And what I mean by that, for example, there is elegantthemes.com. This is a developer, a studio that we've worked with before and they don't have a million themes to choose from. They've got 87, but this is a company that is pretty famous and develops themes. And this is a one that I'd be that I'd feel better by using. It's safer. It's from a real reputable company. Why is it reputable? I'm telling you it's reputable. Yes, but I'm also, you know, it's the experience of 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 searching. This one place here is actually a subscription. You have to buy access to the themes and then you get all of them and tech support and all of that. If I actually want to buy... If I actually want to get a subscription to buy the themes from this developer, We have the personal level, developer level, lifetime access level. Personal level is $69 per year, and you get all of these theme, theme options here. Developer, you get even more. And then lifetime, it's $249, but one time for as many new themes that they develop and tech support and all of that good stuff. This is one place, Elegant Themes. Another place is over at themeforest.net. Here under themeforest.net I can search for the keywords of themes and this is a very big marketplace and what's cool about this, this is multiple people contributing here. It's not, it's not one studio. It's multiple, um, it's multiple people, it's a marketplace. So here I did a quick search for e-commerce WordPress, 1400 templates, 1400 themes. Well, how do I know the good ones? There are ratings, there is number of downloads, there are comments. That's how I can decide what's a good theme, because maybe someone did create a bad theme. Well, first of all, the theme forest people check things out to see if everything's good. And second, the people themselves that download these rate and comment on everything. So the number one result is, in my case, Glammy. Number two is one called, you know, the uh, e-commerce WordPress theme Adobe. This one's higher than that one, so it must be the best, right? No? Well, if I look on the side here, it's got 19 ratings, so 4 out of 5 stars, 262 sales. The next one down has 4.5 stars, more ratings, more sales. And I can further click on a particular theme, read all about it, get a preview of it, test drive it, and I can see comments. What are people commenting on the theme? And then we've got support and all of that. So this is really the place where I would guide you toward. Yes, you can do searches on uh, on Google, Bing, Yahoo, whatever, and find a bunch of websites that have a bunch of themes. This is one of the big ones to go here, to go to find that, and because of its, you know, reputation building and, and, and people giving comments, this is the place that I would recommend. 
what I would further say as you're browsing and browsing and browsing, keep these things in mind. Look at a theme and look at the little box on the side where it'll tell you this information here. It'll tell you what browsers it's compatible with. If it's only compatible with Chrome, for example, it's not a good theme because not everyone uses Chrome. People use Safari, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Opera. So usually any good theme will be compatible with all browsers. This is in this case saying it's also compatible with WooCommerce, Bootstrap, etc. You need WordPress 4.2 and such. It's well documented, it's responsive, four columns. That's good. But also, you want to look here, last updated. Themes need updates just like other software. When we talked about updates, remember we said there's the WordPress core, there are plugins, and there are themes. And all three of those could be attack vectors. If you've got an old version of WordPress, if you're still using WordPress 3, there's probably bugs in that that could make your site hackable. So you want to update your WordPress software. You could have a plugin that runs your your chat feature, but that's an old version. You haven't gone from version 1.7 to 2 yet, and that could have vulnerabilities. And same thing with your theme. You could have a theme that hasn't been updated and therefore you're a target. What I'm getting at here is this theme has not been updated from since December. December, January, February, March. We're three months into the year. That's a quarter of the year. And I bring that up because that might be a long time. You know, in internet time, it's a long time. In real world time, it's just three months. But in internet time, that's three whole months that someone could possibly be trying to figure out an exploit to this quote-unquote old software. Three months might be enough time for someone to figure out how to break into your site. So I recommend when you're thinking about getting a theme, try to get themes that are have been updated in, in less than three months. If it's been six months since an update, nine months, 12 months, 18 months since an update, that's not good. That's six months that someone's had time to figure out how to break into your site or more. This one's just on the cusp. It hasn't been updated in three months. I'm a little iffy on it. I don't know if I want to run my shopping cart on it. Maybe contact the developer. Are you going to do a new, a new theme soon? Maybe they reply to you, maybe they don't. That's why you want to look at the comments as well. The last comment was five months ago. Maybe people have moved on. Or actually, wait a minute. It's four months ago. 15 days ago. No, it seems that people are commenting and keeping it alive here. I would then comment and say, are you going to develop a new version soon? Are there any bugs in the site? When you were talking about subscribing to WooCommerce and then new things, and I think they're like, I don't know exactly the actual subscription rate, but it's like three hundred dollars a year or something like that. It could be valuable, definitely. It's the cost of doing business. In the real world, I need to I need to, you know, pay money to earn money. I need to spend money to earn money. In, in the digital world, there is that to, the, to a degree also. If you feel that what they're offering is valuable to you and could help you have a better shop, I would pay for it, and I do recommend that to clients, depending on what they need. So it is valuable to get these subscriptions. And isn't it sort of good to specialize in one environment, like new themes and new comments, rather than jumping from theme to theme to theme? It is better, because then they, they make the effort to make everything compatible. So if a particular theme is optimized for WP Commerce or optimized for WooCommerce, then it's a better theme that one, than one that isn't, because they've actually tried to make it compatible. And that could sa save you trouble down the line. I, I'm thinking more in terms of just knowledge and my knowledge to have to learn somebody else's theme that's totally different and customizes totally different versus yeah. picking a parent company like, let's say, Move, move Theme. 
Yeah, that's another good point. That's another good point because oftentimes these design studios create their themes in a very uniform way. So once you learn how one works and you get another theme from the same studio, then it might be very easy to pick it up and start using it rather than jumping to a brand new developer with a brand new way of doing things. So these are $59 and so forth. You would create an account. What we're going to do is we're going to take our next break and what I recommend is find a free theme for the moment. Maybe just browse here the plain old WordPress um, <coughs> directory. Find a theme and install it. Play with it a bit. After the break then we'll talk about child themes because usually any customization that you do on these things will be lost when you do the update. We'll talk about that. So it's 240, we'll be back at 250. We'll talk about child themes.